Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's video, we are going to be looking at a bunch of different products so I can show you guys like quality, quantity, sizes, maybe color corrections and all that stuff pertaining to certain products. The products that we are looking at today are with the help of lovely Vograce. I've worked with Vograce in the past before. So this is Vograce's website. Uh, Vograce is a manufacturing company that does a amazing job at doing quality products along with having a super wide variety of products along with a low minimum quantity. So let's go ahead and navigate their website. Um, their website's super easy to use and order your products. So basically, let's go into custom keychains so I can show you guys really simple on how you can upload your files along with uh, just making your selections. So you can see that there's a bunch of different selections here so you can easily customize your products. As you can see on this particular item, there's a bunch of different things that you can customize. So you can do epoxy on one side, you can do hollow, you can do glitter. Um, you can do two different designs or the same design. You can also customize the size. Um, and they have a bunch of different accessories, including like clasps, um, also like phone straps, key rings, all that. Perfect. You can see the quantity here is only three. Yeah. So when you're uploading your artwork, you can choose your file here and they have a way that they would like you to submit your designs. Um, so if you have multiple designs, make sure to follow this format. So you can check out here um, the amount of minimum quantity and their prices and discounts that you get off. So this is perfect if you want to do um, many different charms, either for um, different designs or you want to do um, like a bulk order for maybe a store run or if you're going to be tabling at a convention so you can see that this is how they have everything they have the product name minimum quantity is three pieces cmyk printing and you can even check different uh reviews and you can see the quality on them as well which is really nice because i think it's also nice just being able to see the quality from other people's photos so these are really cute um they're like the pokemon and they have a nice organized way for you to answer all of your questions and they have a bunch of different items up here you can see so my, my favorite thing to do is always going to see what's in their new arrivals there's a bunch of different things here so very cool another thing i want to talk about is the vip and you can check out the information right here so basically you can subscribe to their vip pass and basically get a discount um, you can see here it says unlimited use for eight percent discount for code of 2023 shipping fee is not included in this coupon and then you can have 26 percent in the monthly discount activities when people enjoy 20 percent off and then some other benefits right here. You can see free sample pack. You get a membership community, limited products prior already, purchase qualification, vote rights for monthly discount products, which is very cool. Place an order for free samples and fill out the questionnaire to get bonus points. So this is valid until the end of the year. So if you purchase it, it um, is effective immediately. So yeah, you can see it right here or just some of the discount codes if you have this VIP pass. So um let's get into the products but like i said if you want to just check out their website to see what kind of range of products that they have i highly recommend it i'll leave the link into the description so you guys can check it out along with any codes or any links um, will all be in the description so let's get into the products as usual i usually make uh notebooks so a lot of you guys we are not going to be able to see due to the sun I apologize. It's cloudy today, so the sun's gonna keep coming in and out. And then number three. So I have three designs this time that I'm gonna be having on my store. And I kind of chose these designs for certain reasons. One, because I thoroughly enjoy the color combinations and I tend to like drawing stuff that has more of a floral theme. But I also wanted to show you guys the color payoff and quality as long, along with the texture. So I'm going to show you guys the texture really quickly. I think the texture is definitely more apparent in the darker colors. Uh, I think more so this one than some of my other ones. I'm going to grab actually my darker notebook. So I have these two darker ones. Um, so you guys probably know the Epiphylum notebook. And you can see that the color is a little bit more subtle. So the texture is not as apparent. It has kind of like that fake leather texture. Kind of looks like spots or dots kind of texture. More so on this one. 
So I think the more color shifts you have in your illustration for the notebook is going to cause it to have that more jarring texture. So this one has like the least amount uh, because for the most part, this has more or less like uh, flat colors for everything. You can see it a little bit in the gradation too. So don't have like expectation of like uh, sketchbook quality paper. Just be wary that this is very thin paper. Like I would say it's very similar to printer paper, a lot smoother than printer paper though. And it's kind of like a off warmer white compared to like normal printer paper. But you can see that the inside has kind of like manila color for the inside cover. And the back side has a pocket. Near the center, you are given a ribbon so you can keep your place in the notebook um, and it comes with a band. So when you're customizing your notebooks, you can customize basically the whole front and back as one. Just be wary of the borders. I tried to align uh, stuff onto the spine too. So I have like a little bit of a logo. Yeah, these are the notebooks. Like I said, this is kind of like the paper type in here. It's very thin. But I find it still works with a lot of mediums, but they do have like other paper for like if you want lines, you want grids, I believe they have dots and then the blank page. So I'm going to be showing, showing you guys the grid one. So for testing purposes, I decided to also get a small version. So just for comparison, this is the size difference. You can see the colors are exactly the same. Um, I was lucky that the staff member actually caught my mistake. Um, because I forgot to format it to be the same for this one. I gave them the same size formatting for this for this one. But you can see on the side, also has the same logo, just really tiny. But for this one, I decided to get it with the grid paper. So I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of like light, or like kind of like mid-tone gray lines for the inside. It has the same manila. And the paper type is still the same, it's just that this this one has lines rather than being completely blank. Hopefully you guys can see. So this is a Paul Rubens watercolor sketchbook or journal. I wanted to use it so you guys can see the size difference of what the other sizes could be. So A6, A5, and potentially what the size for the B5 would look like if you were to upscale. I'm thinking maybe in the future I would like to give this a try though, because I would love to have a bigger sketchbook potentially, or a notebook. Like I said, these are notebooks, not sketchbooks. But yeah, I think the color payoff looks really pretty. I'm always happy with the printing quality and just like in general. Um, and Vogris was very nice to let me know if they had any issues with printing or if they um, they always show you proofs so you have an idea of what your stuff is going to look like prior to printing. Next up is the Omanju. Okay, let's get into Omanju next, which are these Sealies. So on their website, um, if you check, they have a bunch of different options for like ear types. You can have short ears, long ears, like... Uh, I think like BB whistles and like tails and stuff you can attach. I've seen people do like cat versions and bunny versions. But for some reason, like when I was on their website, the bunny version of the ears were not listed, I do not think. So when you submit your order and you're talking to your rep, uh, make sure to uh, like clearly explain to what you wanted. And I had to explain to them that I, was it possible to get something similar to bunny ears? Because I knew I've seen on their website that they've done something similar so i was asking if that's possible but you can see the color payoff is actually really nice the printing is really well done also comes with the little uh attachment right here so you can keep it as a keychain but i thought these would fit the omanju design really nicely because of the little uh bunny ear attachment i guess you could have with them so i plan to make the other ones eventually but i thought this was a cute way to do it i will have a few of these on my store and maybe in the future i'll make the rest of them i'll make sure to put the template so you guys can see how i did the designs in general but next up is acrylic charms because acrylic charms i'm always happy with their quality Here's an example of an old version I had from, I think last year actually. So this one is of Artem Wing from Tears of Femus. And I have with the epoxy resin on top, I have glitter and I have the hollow stars. And then on the back, it's just the plain version. But I really love the, just like the, the heftiness of their charms. It feels very sturdy. I don't feel like they're gonna break or snap. And you can always uh, customize your clasps and stuff. They have a 
humongous variety for clasps. I put one of each into the bags right here, so we'll open them up one by one so I can show you guys. But here is what I made for this batch, which is a bunch of VTubers. So these are specifically Niji Sanji EN of Lazulite and Luxium charms. I'm trying to see if I can get a good way to show you guys because the light is very harsh right now. So this one is of Ike. I got the hollow stars. Um, I don't think I got glitter this time. And then it's also just the plain backside, so no epoxy and no hollow uh, stars. So yeah, there is Ike. But you can get your charms directly like this. So usually on the epoxy side, there is no film. It's because they're fully protected already. I decided to give him kind of this pale yellow clasp. And then on the back side, you might see, can you guys see the scratches and stuff? Not sure if you can, but always on the back side, especially on the flat side of charms, a lot of companies will put a plastic film. So you just take the plastic film off. Some people let their customers do this. Um, I personally do because I don't want the charms to get uh, busted or scratched up during transit. I had fun designing the drinks. I think at the very end, I'll go through some of my designing process whenever I do this um, and you guys can probably see how I set up like my files and set up just general references for whenever I kind of make these kinds of products. purple drink super cute remove the plastic and his has a purple clasp now I did make these charms a lot larger uh, just because I want the drinks to be able to be seen properly yeah here is shoe and that's it for the acrylic charms. So for acrylic charms, you can definitely customize the size of them, the clasp. They have a bunch of different like, I think they have like rose gold, they have gold, they have silver. Um, they have a bunch of different shapes. Not only that, they do epoxy, they do hollow, they do glitter, they do um, kind of a like a rainbow-ish kind of epoxy or resin or like the acrylic is just colored so there's a lot of different varieties that you can do you can also do charms without the epoxy as well so it'll look kind of like this on the back for both sides so there's a lot of different options and different price points for you guys if you want to make a bunch of different kind of uh, acrylic charm products they also have like acrylic stands actually let's get into the acrylic standees so I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with this. This is my phone stand. Super pretty. The color payoff is pretty much the same from my digital design for the most part. You can customize the standy uh, base. And then I have it double-sided for this one. But let's talk about new design. <clears throat> Packed away nicely into this bubble wrap. Some people who came to my live streams when I was working on this might have seen this design already. So this design only has the one side with the design on the bottom. Like Masaki's, or unlike Masaki's, um, his, his is double-sided. But I just thought it wasn't really necessary to have it double-sided. So you can see the scratches, right? So that is usually a good indication that there is some kind of film on the back. And then the back side. I think the color is gorgeous though. I love like these deep blues. So I'm glad the printing was able to do it just. And then here is the standee portion. You can see the colors are super vibrant. Uh, part of it's like my mistake uh, because I work with a lot of saturated colors. So the purples really stand out. And then on this side, we have Lumine, which is a little bit more on the lighter side because Ether has a lot more blacks and kind of like dark browns-ish colors. So we can put this onto the stand. So like I said, you just slip this side in. And then once it's in, you twist and you can have Lumine on this side. 
or you can twist it again and you can have ether. So I tried my best to match the bottom to the background here for both of them. I do think Lumine matches a little bit better with the base, uh, but I think ether still looks quite nice. And it stays nice and sturdy. Now my problem is that um, if you don't have a flexible cord for charging, I do think the charger sometimes gets in the way of the sandy. So this one sits nicely uh, because the cord can bend. But I know some people have like thicker cords or ones that can't bend, so sometimes charging is a bit of a hassle. Um, but for the most part, I don't really have a problem. And oftentimes I use it like this as well, so I can usually charge it anyways. Okay, so I only have a few products left that I personally ordered, and then we'll get into some other stuff too. So I usually print stickers on my own, but I wanted to test out their sticker sheets because I've only done the washi sticker sheet before, but this time I decided to get transparent ones. So these ones are the of the Niji Sanji EN members at the time. I only had it up until Aluna, so yeah, it's it's been a little bit. <laughs> I, whenever I do transparent stickers, it's always like they're quite faded because there's no white on the backing to keep them very vibrant on different surfaces. So let's give these ones a try today. You can see that this one is very glossy. Like I said, only up until Luna. So let's go ahead and do a test really quickly though. Some people might be confused on why I'm excited that there's white. Uh, basically, a lot of companies that I know that do kind of like a lot of companies that do like clear stickers don't apply some kind of like white on the back. You can see that this one does. So whenever you have transparent stickers, usually they become super faded. So I do see that there is a little bit of a darker uh, line going across Finana very subtly, uh, which means that it's not purely uh, opaque, which I'm not too bothered because it's very uh, hard to notice. But you can see that the clear sticker works nicely. So these ones would be perfect if you're planning to do like uh, planner stickers. Uh, last but not least from the products that I decided to make with Vograce. Um, this is like one of their newest arrivals. So it is the binder clip. So the binder clip, um, I didn't know what to expect from making these. I got a few of them made. Um, these are probably going to be more or less like for personal use or for gifts for friends. But you can see it has like a white uh, clasp. Right here. I don't know if this is a clasp, like a clip, um, and it's for binder clips, but you can see that there's kind of like an opening right here. So it's kind of like a clothespin kind of uh, opening. So here are the samples that they gave me. Some things I have used before, I believe, and then some other stuff are new stuff, new arrivals. Uh, fixed data, cables, sealed bags, bookmarks, and souvenirs. Actually, I think this would be cute to adhere to cables because of that wide opening in the center. Bookmarks is probably a good one as well and sealed bags. You could probably use them for like chip bags and stuff. Yeah, I feel like it holds it holds it well. So let me let me grab a few more pages into here and see how much you can clip. It's a little bit too much. But where it can clip, it clips really well. So I'm really happy with these. I think these are super cute. Um, I feel like if you did like a bunch of different cute characters, this would be very cute to have just for like an aesthetic. So this is what it looks like when it's packaged. And on the inside. Oh, this is very cute. I actually like this idea, uh, considering the fact that I don't use a full length lanyard when I go out. My keys are on like a, I think just like double the size of this because I have a 17 one. These are super cute though. I like the idea of kind of purchasing this as a set though. Clasp and then the, on a key ring. I think this is super cute. These also have the plastic film, but I'm going to leave the plastic film for now. Super cute. I think if you're into making like merch bundles or something, this might be a better option for you. So bubble shaker keychain. Products can be designed to be double-sided. You can place your favorite accessories inside and shake them for more fun. Yeah, these ones are cute. Uh, I think these ones are different though compared to the ones that I did. The ones that I got were the candy shaker charms. These ones are candy bag charms. These ones are bubbles, so it doesn't have the little uh, crispy little choppy kind of chip bag edges. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
And this one has like a pattern on both sides. Let's keep all of these inside. I do like the packaging though. This is very cute. So we have some stickers and keychain set. Oh, it's like another set together. So let me get this guy out so we can read the labeling. Uh, product info. There are stickers and one killer keychain in the box packaged in a transparent box with a raffia filler inside to protect your product. So another great option if you plan to do kind of like a little package bundle. So that's very cool. Acrylic charm with the cat clasp. Super cute. Very cute. Acrylic keychain. This is just a normal acrylic or clear acrylic cat keychain. I really love this clasp. It's so cute. And then it's a bundle with a bunch of stickers. Now looking by these, these are just die cut stickers. But I, I always love the weight of their stickers. It feels very professional, very, very, very nice. So you can see it's not transparent. It seems to be just a glossy, maybe the weatherproof one or the vinyl. It might be vinyl. Oh, this is a like a like a pillow sheet, I think. Right? I mean, oh yeah, this is like a cushion. So I feel like you would stuff this by yourself. I do have like poly filling, but I won't do that for this one. Very interesting. I didn't really think of ever making like a pillow cushion type thing but this is kind of cool though they did send me uh something i'll show you guys in a bit vogris also does mouse pads so these are like the the circle ones which is very cute and i can see a lot of the details so let me see if i can show you guys you can see like that fabric texture um, but yeah, this is the circle mouse pad that you would use, you know, for something like this. Super cute. Uh, they also have like the gamer mouse pad or like desk mats. So a lot larger with the RGB as well. So you guys can check that out on their website as well. Last but not least, <laughs> they sent me this. So I believe this is like a cushion, which is similar to the other one. Uh, but this is a different material. It's interesting. But you can see that they kind of do custom shaped pillows. This one's like of a little cat. You can see on the front and the back. And it's stuffed really nicely. Like it's super firm. Um, it has a little zipper here. Oh, what the? Huh. What? <laughs> okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe is this a pillow? I guess. Oh, I guess it's like, it's, it's like a set. So this is a pillow. Because it has stuffing on its own. Interesting. I'm actually very shocked right now. Pillow. We can zip it up. Pillow. It's still squishy. And it still has like some dimension to it. But inside is a blanket. I'm actually quite shocked. <laughs> so there's a whole there was a whole blanket inside of that pillow. Like I like an entire fro blanket. Uh, let's go into more. So you guys can look into their their products. I'll make sure to link the individual links into the description so you guys can see it as well. Um, but I think this would be very cute to have. I'm actually thinking right now if I ever want to make uh, like a custom one or something very cute for my friend because they do a lot of traveling. So that is all for the products for today. So I think what I'm going to do is switch over to my desktop so I can show you guys how I did um, some of the designs as well as how I go about planning for, um, let's say like the notebook covers or when I do like the kind of like the acrylic charms. Also, I might show some stuff in my, my Procreate as well in my sh folder so you guys can see so you can go through that as well. I know a lot of people have questions about this folder. No, I'm not drawing sussy things or anything like that in this folder. It literally is just projects that I can't show you guys uh, due to be parting, like part of like zine projects or if I'm doing designs and I don't want to reveal them quite yet. People don't get too excited for things I might just like immediately scrap. So there's some zine stuff, some collab stuff that I did with some other people. You can see that there's a few things in here as well. Had a few ideas 
So I believe, yes, I believe I think I started with these ones. So I had a lily pad idea like this. Do I have, I do not have the time lapse. So we have the lily pads right here. I did just general kind of like little rectangles like this and split them if I need to. If I wanted to do more than one design, I put colored bands to see if I prefer which band over another. And then I did little notes just so I can kind of flesh out my ideas. So you guys can see that this one became this book. I decided to not go with the navy blue. I kind of regret it. I do think the navy blue would have been cuter uh, with this book, but I feel like dark green doesn't look too bad. Uh, I did not do this one. So you can see I had a note of what flowers I potentially would have wanted. I usually go on Pinterest and like type red flower or like whatever flower I want to do and then I would sift through and find which ones that I fought and hopefully for the most part they have the flowers uh named so here I think it's called clematis so I had that and I wanted kind of a more red and green look um I also thought about a more purple color scheme purple and yellow because I thought that would look super cute purple dahlias and have each side as kind of reflected um similar to like my other ones like my epiphyllum sketchbook and my peonies where it's kind of like a full layout so you can see I had more of a blue background, I have kind of a darker yellow, and then I have a lighter background with a lighter yellow composition or color scheme. So uh, I want a darker for autumn potentially, or navy or yellow band if I went for that one. And then light aesthetic more for spring, which I went with, which then became this one. This one did become a little bit more of a purpley blue rather than this really high contrasty vibrant blue, but that's because of the CMYK, so just make sure to convert your files accordingly. I actually prefer this blue over this one. I just wish I added a little bit more green. Uh, but yeah, I was trying to figure out the spine as well. As you can see, I don't really plan the spine um, in this phase, but you can see I was trying to figure out which one I, I wanted for the front cover. Uh, and then I also was trying to figure out how I wanted to do the composition. So I could have really dense leaves and then things flowing out, and I could have yellow to blue and white. And then I had baby's breath right here, and then I had planches for hydrangeas. It's for hydrangeas, hydrangeas, hydrangeas. I, I don't know how you say this flower's name. I apologize. I still would like to do this, but I don't feel confident enough painting these flowers quite yet. So maybe with a little bit more references and a bit of practice, I could do it. But you can see I was planning it out. Wanted the logo on the spine, wanted my watermark or my signature on the back side, right at the bottom. But yeah, here's the baby's breath, which became this one later. So you can see that it follows similar composition, but I feel like I just gravitate towards a certain composition anyways. But yeah, here's the front and here's the back. I'll hop into Paint Tool Sci or into Clip Studio Paint so I can show you guys what these became later, since some of you guys have seen it. Here's the, the base, and you can see it's a little bit more green in person. It's hard to see it on camera. It's a little bit more green. Um, and we have ether who came out a lot more vibrant. And then we have Moomin on this side. So yeah, just make sure to look at your designs carefully and flip them accordingly if you have a double-sided design. Okay, so, wah. Okay, so on to the design aspect of everything. So I wanna show you guys how I usually do like general planning or anything like that. So like I said, I did the sketchbook planning in majority of like it in Procreate. I believe I have, uh, this is my idea dump, here it is. So I exported that file. I don't remember. Yeah, I had these ones. So I had exported both of these images and I cropped them basically, paste them into, uh, my file here. So you can see I have um, 18 layers apparently. So let me hide all of these first. So this is the template or something similar to the template that they have on their website. I just enlarged it to the proper size that I need, but it gives me like a general indication. So for me, I actually put in the borders myself just so I can have a clear indication so we can get rid of this. So this is basically what I use to plan out the sketchbook phase. I have the blue and the red as separate things so that I know which ones are the borders and which ones are the, or like which color is the, what is it called? The spine. Okay, so I don't remember if I actually pasted in the original version, so this version, um, into 
here, but you can see I have a general planning of how I wanted the everything to look. And this is basically my duplicated sketch. So after that, I put in the background and obviously my sketch would be above everything at this point. Um, so I'll put everything above. And then I did a blurred version in the back, just very simple shapes. I went to Gaussian blur to blur everything so you can get a general indication of how I wanted everything to look. Um, I did one more layer. Um, I believe this layer was actually done after I did the general rendering of the ginkgo leaves. So, which are these ones? Um, and you can see I changed the placement of some of these leaves afterwards, so it doesn't really match with the sketch. But this is what I ended up with. Um, and we can get rid of the borders. So you can see that these blurred areas right here are actually basically enlarged versions of the rendered leaves that I already have here. The spine and my signature or like my watermark so i have my watermark at the bottom and i have this directly where the spine would be and i tried to center it as much as possible so this is how i just like to format it i know some people like to put like uh maybe their name on the spine or some kind of writing on the spine you can do like definitely do that especially because these are notebooks uh ginkgo leaves look like i also have this thing that says idea don't please check so sometimes i do random scribblings like this to figure out how i want to do uh, potential ideas for other things. So I wanted to, this to be a pen holder or a acrylic stand where they could have a kind of like a sandwich board type thing and you could write your memos and stuff and erase it with a dry erase marker. Uh, lily pads follow the same, uh, same planning phase. So let me go through this one more time, but I decided to do this. So I did this as kind of my planning phase and then i had my sketch on top so that i could figure out the placement i did put some of these areas too close to the edge so they were kind of clipped off because they fold into the front portion of the notebook before they put like the manila tag cover in the inside um, but you can see i have the background colors but my inspo was this so i did a cover for my wanu fanzine and this is what the color scheme looked like so i kind of wanted to play off the same color scheme so that was my main reference so i had this turned into these and then i had this for the background and then similar i had the borders planned out um, for all of them add my signature i also have the things for the what is it called? The spine. I don't know. I have two signatures here though. I'm going to see if I can show you guys. So I have a program called Pure Ref and I use Pure Ref to actually put all my references together. So I used to use Eagle and I still like using Eagle to compile images, but because of working in Paint Tool Sci, it's not possible for me to uh, have like a floating window. I believe you can have it in the, the, the second version. Don't tell me it's gone. Uh, that is strange. Okay, here's my old one. So for my Epiphylum one, you can see that I had my inspos like this. And I have my uh, Pure Ref on a transparent. You guys can see kind of the lines here. But I have it on a transparent window so that I can have it floating. Um, over everything. I love floating windows by the way guys like floating video player floating reference kind of window So I have it like this so I can have everything compiled and you can see you can zoom in like infinitely kind of um, And you kind of make your boards. So I have like color schemes for the epiphylum I have my main inspo. So my main how uh, watercolor piece And then I have pictures of the flowers so I could draw them individually I was planning to have these smaller white flowers to be in there, but for the most part, I decided to just go with the epiphylums. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, this is my old one. So this is for the ginkgo leaves one. Um, you can see you can work on your canvas and stuff and your references will just stay. But yeah, here is what I had for the references for the ginkgo leaves. So I had one with a blue background-ish, but I wanted to be more vibrant. I potentially wanted to have green ones. Okay, so for the manju, this is what their uh, template looks like. It's very confusing. I promise you it's not too bad. Um, so for me, the Sealy manju looks like this. So I put majority of the design just right into the center. On the back side, I have a little thing for the, the butt, I guess, of it. And it kind of shows you what things look like here. So if you want to mark the tail on the back, 
um, and also if you have wings or any other accessories and then where the edge of the ear should extend for the part where to be, be sewn in and then it has like different requirements I just put them into here because I didn't really want to look at everything so uh, in the end I sent them this one so that they have like some kind of indication of where to put the ears now i don't know if the space between the ears was determined by me or them but this is what i ended up sending them later um so that they knew what the design was supposed to look like phone stand i have lumin in ether so you can see this is the template that they use i just put the images right into where the cut lines are supposed to be so we have our standee right here and then we have ether and lumin you can see that uh, Ether is labeled front artwork and Lumin is labeled as back artwork. And Lumin's drawing is flipped. So she's initially supposed to look like this, but I flipped her and she looks like this. So that when they print it, she doesn't print backwards. Um, and then for the charms, uh, I just went for a whole process of line work and just coloring of things here for the drinks and everything. Um, but when I did the lines, what I did was put them all into this template that I made a makeshift cut hole and then the cut line I just made by going around the whole entire design to what I think looked okay and that is what I did. I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory and for the most part, I think Vogue Grace's website makes a lot of sense and usually when you click on a product and usually when you scroll down, you can see that there's a template so it takes you to a Google Drive um, and you can click on to this and it shows you right here um, the different templates and stuff that they have so you can see that they have the pen holder and you can make sure that your artwork fits these criteria nicely so if you're interested in checking out Vogue Race, be sure to check out any of the links down below. Thank you again to Vogue Race for letting me try out many of their amazing products. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!